a disconnect. There was a problem in his relationship with his God. Are you hearing me? Had there not been a problem in his relationship with God, disobeying, he would not have had that fear. Jesus, the lover of my soul. Jesus, the God of creation. Your mercy, your mercy will never go. Oh, Jesus, Lord Jesus, come fill, come fill my heart with your fire. Oh, Jesus, Lord Jesus, loving you, loving you is my heart. Riches are much more than gold. Your word, your word unto me is refreshing. Like water, like water to my thirsty soul. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, Lord Jesus, come fill, come fill my heart with your fire. Oh Jesus, Lord Jesus, loving you, loving you is my heart.
Praise the Lord. God is good. He's a wonderful, wonderful Savior. I can't say it enough. He's good. It's good to see everybody here today. For those that we had, we we're seeing first time in a couple of months. I want to start uh, perhaps at verse 12 and read down through 19. If you're there, say amen. All right, we're going to begin at verse 12. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Together, we love him because he first loved us. Amen. Father, thank you for the word of God. We're asking that you'll take these scriptures, Lord, and bless us. Strengthen us and let healing flow unto us. Let security come. Let let a sense of assurance, Lord, come to us, Lord, through your word. Calm jittery nerves. Heal our souls. Let us be secure in your love. And Father, we give you praise. Abandon or drive out all fear. At this time, in Jesus' name, we pray. Take control, Lord. Have your way. We need your strength and your precious anointing. Touch God by the power of your Holy Spirit. And be lifted up now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. You all have been keeping up with the news. You see what's happening not only in our nation, but all over the world. One man obviously became a martyr, or he was the straw that set things off. That not only America, but the world is saying, that's enough. That's enough injustice. And my heart was so encouraged to see the unity all over the world. Our pastor sent me a little minute and a half, a two minute video, and it shows thousands upon thousands in major c cities across the world London, Britain, uh, Paris, France, and Italy, and uh, Germany. Just And uh, as I looked at them, some were kneeling, some had pictures of um, George F Floyd. Looking and observing how we American or how America is treating her citizens and they say that's not right so I am I, 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 I've got to say my heart has been encouraged I've been, we've been praying and for years and many of us and uh, to see God bringing people together to uh, bring about a greater sense of uh, uh, significance and uh, everyone is significant in God's eyes and so we appreciate that and thank him for it. And I said I would be right there in line peacefully protesting. But I'm not able to do it now. So, But I believe in it. I believe in what's being, happen, being done. I believe that justice is very important. Um, in the days of old when the prophets uh, were sent by God, they were sent to decree justice. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. And so God has not changed. Um, this text here, I've read this text, but uh, I'm going to read a few other texts. And I want to talk about being made secure from fear. And I want to sort of go back, of course, in the beginning where fear began. We see here the Apostle John was making clear in the beginning he said to try the spirits and see whether they are of God and then he began to talk about the nature of God, love, and we that are born of God have the spirit of God and we, uh, he talked about the source of God's love, he talked about uh, the example or illustration of God's wonderful love uh, he gave his son and then encouraged us to love, to love one another. And as uh, I was going through those scriptures here, uh, it, it, it was a, a good reminder of our purpose and our calling. We are called to be like Jesus. For we are made in the image of and likeness of God. And that which was lost in Adam was restored in Christ, right? Are you out there? And so since that was restored uh, to, to purpose to follow after and pattern our lives after the nature of God is extremely important. We then fulfill our purpose. Love is perfected when it comes from God to us and from us to others. Love is complete, right? But love is not complete when it comes to God to us and not dispensed to others. That make sense? Somebody said a triangle. Coming to me from God, coming to you from God, and then coming to each other through that same spirit of God. But John was encouraging us that in order to do this, of course, it's the fruit coming from the spirit that we've been born of, right? And he did say in verse 18, um, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear had torment or involves punishment. Then he said, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. And let me say, he that feareth is not made secure, sufficiently secure in God's love. And I'm going to go back now to the beginning. Uh, um, and before I do that, there's just a quick review. On Sunday before last, we talked about sin. And we mentioned uh, God was reminding us that sin is both deceitful and it hardens a person's heart. And uh, concluding that sometimes we don't yield to God or obey God as we are called to because sometimes um, maybe there has not been a sufficient self-examination and sin has sort of found an inroad and subtly begin to harden our heart. And so when that happens, God may speak to us and we may do what we feel that we want to do. And some of the things that he wants us to do, we may not do. 
So I was riding along and God began to speak to me about uh, uh, when he said sin hard. He said, first he said sin is deceptive. And it really grabbed my attention and says, wow, okay. So God, I knew he wanted to talk to me about it. And of course, naturally I went through my repentant and uh, getting it right. But um, and then the next week he began to say, um, we were talking to my wife and I, and, and he said, if we would judge ourselves, then we would not be judged. But if we are judged, or when we're judged, we are chastened of God that we will not be condemned with the world. We talked about God uh, chastens us and, uh, uh, so that we will sometimes get in line, more in line with his will and purpose for our lives. And, but the final is that we not be condemned with the world. But he did say if we would judge ourselves, then basically he wouldn't have to judge us, right? And then we went on to judge us. I mean, uh, Matthew 7 Verse 1 and 2 says, judge not, that you be not judged. So we can avoid a lot of heartaches and pains when we, one, judge ourselves, and two, when we refuse to judge others. We can keep the boomerang effect. Things going around and coming back and around and getting us. We can avoid that when we choose to judge not. There are situations and circumstances and attitudes and behaviors that looks like it requires judging. Uh, we are to judge a righteous judgment, but the judging I'm talking about now is coming to a decision, deciding and examining the situation, discriminating, and making a choice based on our assessing or our judgment. And we understand that our judgment is partial at best, right? And we said that since we don't want someone to judge us with partial judgment, then we choose, according to the word, not to judge. Are you with me? And so if I'm going to live a happier life, if I'm going to live a more fulfilling life that is acceptable to God, then I refuse to judge. And I examine myself. Are you with me? He said, let a man examine himself. He said in Corinthians, we talked about that. And so let him, of course, partake of that, the Lord's Supper. But it had to do with how we were treating one another in the body. And so today I want to talk about fear and becoming secure in God's love. Because this is the will of God. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 3, if you will. Genesis 3. Verse 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be designed, desired to make one wise, she took up the first, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. I believe that's the earliest account of fear. And you see that what brought the fear on was a disconnect. There was a 
problem in his relationship with his God. Are you hearing me? Had there not been a problem in his relationship with God, disobeying, he would not have had that fear. And so God brought me there, first of all, to see the origin of that. And um, so um, I thought about that, and, but Adam was quite secure prior to that. He was secure in God's love. God would come down and talk to him. He asked him the name, all the species, everything that lived. And he was able to do it. He was quite a person connected to God. And you and I are quite a people connected to God. Because we're connected to the source of all life and all knowledge. And uh, so he... I, I, I want you to ponder on that. He said, I heard your voice in the garden. That voice that was pleasant all of a sudden became a terror. Because of where he was with his God. And so sometimes if we aren't careful, fear can subtly get in there. Uh, through things that's happening unsettled or unresolved conflicts and a lot of other things and fear can set in there and so before we know it our relationship with our God is not as it should be and when that happened then fear sets in all right so as we go on um, he took me to Luke chapter 1 so if you'll follow with me. Luke chapter 1. Beginning at verse 6 to 7. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham that he would grant to us that we, take note, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might do what? Serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Would you look at somebody and say, this is the will of God for you. So God wants to free us and God will free someone today of fear. Well, fear, the fear that is paralyzing, the fear that is crippling, the fear that is uh, oppressive must leave God doesn't want us to have that and we go on I'm going to take you a little further to the book of Romans you go chapter 8 he says here in verse 14 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry of a father. The Spirit itself, or himself bear witness, with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then heirs, 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So notice he's talking about sons of God, which brings a sense of security right in the midst of saying God didn't give us a spirit of fear. The idea of sonship is to bring a sense of peace and security and harmony with our God. Are you with me? And so God, that's what he desires now that we have. That sense of security and peace. We belong to God. God was pleased to give us his spirit. The spirit of his son. And since he was pleased to give us the spirit of his son, he's pleased with us. He has to be pleased, otherwise he would not have given us of his spirit. But it is a fact that sometimes we go along not operating as sons, but operating as slaves. Isn't that right? The difference in a son and a slave, the son has a sense of security and confidence and the slave constantly lives in fear and uncertainty because he knows not the mind of his master. But the Bible says we have the mind of That we might know the things that are freely given us of God. God is with us. Man of God came by before Corona got his worst. And God says, I know the plans that I have for you. To do you good. To prosper you. 